We have so many stories in our lives, but our stories are not always heard. On the Hear My True Story podcast, we tell our own true stories. Before the white car backed, our head teacher had scattered. Looking at him, I could only see his tie that was flying backwards, waving at us, and he disappeared in thin air. I want to share my life story. I want to share my voice with the people because I know that uh, just a small joke I can tell through this, this podcast, it will make someone smile. When you ask me what I fear most in life, I would definitely respond to you and say it's fear itself. We are fighting for togetherness. We are fighting for equal rights. We are fighting to end injustice. You don't have to be a storyteller or writer because, guess what? Life writes the best stories. Hear my true story. In this episode, we share a true story told by Nicholas Kaiwa as part of the Hear My True Story project Kampala. Hear My True Story Kampala Season 1, where we tell true stories and have conversations about real life experiences with non storytellers and storytellers from Uganda. Hear My True Story Kampala is a joint project between Hear My True Story Podcast and Omoti Creative, an organization in Uganda. Omoti Creative is an arts organization that provides safe and free learning spaces for creative arts, educational support, and cultural exchange opportunities to children and youth in Uganda. My name is Kaiwa Nicholas. I am an actor and a public relations officer. I am also a business person. Well, I am going to tell you a story about my first time being in love. The first time I was in love. Well, as kids, when we are young and kids, we are innocent. And we always have big dreams. And we walk and talk by those dreams. And we focus, us, we focus on those dreams as kids because we are just kids, you know. And uh, we are happy. But when we grow up, our focus and priorities changes to the minor things that we always are important. We always think they are important in our lives as, a, as adults. And sometimes we find ourselves regretting about the choices we have made as adults. You know, when I was a, a young kid, I, I, I dreamed to be a lawyer. I always wanted to be a lawyer. Why? Lawyer is because uh, I have a good inspiration story about lawyers and, you know, and uh, I love the way they dress up. I love their style. I love their confidence, you know, and uh, I am also inspired by one person. You know, in our, our home, we have a neighbor. He's a little bit older than, my, than, than, than me and my mom and everyone uh, in our home. But I used to look, at, uh, to look up to this guy. I used to love this guy's style. I used to love his confidence, the way he dresses up, the way his fancy cars and his house. I loved his lifestyle total. And, um, you know, and he's also a kind of a... Of, of, of a man that uh, 
uh, we were given an example too uh, by our mom when he was encouraging when she was encouraging us to study, and uh, she used to, you know, to relate. I mean, she used to 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 inspire us by him, you know, with with his kind of life and. Uh, she used to tell us, you know, mo, 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 you know, you know, is that lawyer guy. So she used to tell us, study hard so that you can look like him, so can so that you can be like him, so that you can drive those good cars, you can, you can, you can have that beautiful house, you know. So I've always wanted to be a lawyer, and I worked so hard during my 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 my, my, my studies in my prim my, my primary and my education in in my secondary, you know, my secondary school and my primary school. I studied so hard so that I can I can get grades that would take me to take a law course, and 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 you know. God is good, and I, 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 I got the grades. And I joined the university. Ha, so life at the university, the first time, you know, fresh man, uh, you know, that, that time you joined the university as a young boy, you know, uh, very excited, you know. Life was really good. I met new people. I have a very nice experience. I was really excited. I, 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 I met people that we always thought intellectual and, you know, life was really good. The first time, the first year, the first semester, I joined the university as a fresher. I was really excited and I loved the lifestyle of, of campus as, you know. Uh, I did everything, you know, with all that excitement, I did everything at the university, my first semester. But you know, I remember one thing I didn't do. You know, when I left, when, when we left high school, joining the university, I had friends around, you know, um, the boys around me. And, you know, we used to, you know, to, to, to have that in mind that by the time we join the university, ha, man, we are, we, we are going to have girls around us. We are going to get to, to date girls, beautiful girls. So their mind was always about dating girls from one girl to another. And I didn't have it in my mind. I, 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 never, I, I, I never planned it. I didn't have that in my mind. I wanted to enjoy all other things, but I... Things with girls, uh, I, 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 I didn't have that in my mind. Reason being is that I, uh, I started in single schools in my primary and secondary school. I, 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 was, I, was, I, I used to study in single schools and uh, I was not so familiar with girls, you know. So I was a little bit shy. I was I was shy and I could not talk to any, to a girl, you know. I was shy. I could not talk to anyone. Things about uh, things concerning relationships. So my first semester, mm -mm, I didn't I didn't date anyone. I didn't, you know. But uh, so we enjoyed, and then second semester came. Ah, uh, wow! Somehow I I met a girl. She was very amazing, beautiful, good looking, you know. She was very nice. And actually, she was even very nice to me. So she was, I don't know, she's all that I wanted in my life. When I looked at this girl, she's the exact person that I've, I've always wanted in my heart. She was soft spoken, yo, you know, and you know, she was brown in, in you know, her skin was brown. She was really beautiful. So um uh, Nkuwa, you know, like I was in love. The first time I saw her, I was I was already in love. So I approached her and then, you know, we started pushing out, we started dating. So our love became strong. 
everyone knew about my baby. The fact is that it was my first time to be in love. So I loved this girl so much. Uh, second semester, that second semester, I always wanted to do things with her. You know, I wanted to go in lectures with her. But unfortunately, the she wasn't studying the same course with me. So I always wanted to, I, I always kept on seeing her around campus. Uh, then we pushed, we pushed, we pushed, we, we got that, that bond. And, and then we had to break for, 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 for holidays. Then second year, first semester, I went back to uni first. In the first week, uh, she didn't come. The first week she didn't come, and uh, but we kept on communicating. You know, we kept on communicating on phone, and she kept on promising that she was coming back. But life without her was boring. For for those first days, life was really boring, and uh, I was really stressed that my girl wasn't around. You know, but we kept on communicating on phone, and she kept on promising that she was coming back. But second week, she called me and told me, you know, Nick, I'm not coming back. Reason being is I don't have money. I don't have um, to, uh, the first installment of my tuition, so I will not come back. Uh, when she told me that, I felt bad. Actually, I got stressed. Uh, then I had to do, I planned to do something. I didn't have money with me. The only money, you know, when I was coming back to uni, uh, my mom gave me tuition fees. But for those two weeks, I had not deposited that money in the bank yet. So when she called me and told me she wasn't coming back, I decided to split this money so that I can send to her so that she can come back. And that's what I did. So when she came back, we sat down and, and, and she told me uh, uh, that she, she, was, she, was, she, she, couldn't come, she couldn't come back because her mom didn't have money and uh, she, she, there's no way uh, she could come back. She, her mom didn't have money and there, there's, a lot of go, there, there's a lot of things that, that, that are going on in her family and she was even thinking of just leave uni and, you know. So we sat down and talked and I felt bad and I felt for her and her family. So in my mind, I made a decision and I decided to, you know, to reapply, to discontinue with my law course. Because uh, my course is uh, a little expensive from that of her course because I was doing law course and she was doing uh, um, mass communication and my course was, uh, I was paying 1.2 and she was paying 800. So I decided to reapply, to, to apply another course, a course that is much less on tuition so that we can split the money. Uh, she takes a half, I also take a half so that we can support each other in tuition. So, and that's, that's the decision I made. So I reapplied another course, the same course with her. That is how much I love this girl. The same course with her. And uh, I also applied for mass communication. So uh, we started this, uh, splitting the money. But I, with that idea, I never told my mom about it. She didn't know about it. She didn't know the decision I made. So she, she, she kept on sending me the same amount of money that I, I, I was paying uh, in, uh, uh, as, 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 as in the low cost. Uh, she kept on sending me 1.2. Uh, but in actual sense, I, I wasn't doing that course anymore. So... Uh, with, the, with that decision, she got happy and I also got happy. Even our love became much stronger. We, came, we became the two bar, loving birds that could not be sought by any circumstance. We pushed on, we pushed on, and then time came and then we had to graduate. But before graduation, I introduced this girl to my family. 
I took her to my mom and my sisters. I remember even that day, we had a very beautiful lunch. My mom welcomed her and she was really happy with her. And uh, we sat down, we talked, she got to know her family. And uh, yeah, she accepted her. And then uh, she left. So two days after that lunch, I came back to my mom and I sat my, my mom down and I told her, Mama, I'm going to graduate, but I, uh, I'm not going to graduate as a lawyer. I am going to graduate in a different course. I could not continue with a law course because I split the money to share with the girl I love. My mom looked at me straight in my face. And the first time, that was the first time I saw tears coming down from the eyes of my mother. I looked at her and I saw disappointment. I realized she was really, really disappointed in me. And that broke my heart. I was... I felt so, I felt sorry. I felt also disappointed in myself. I, I, I felt that uh, it was the worst decision I made, splitting that money, I mean disappointing my mother. She looked at me and she called me, actually she called me by my surname. She said, Kaiwa, Kaiwa is my surname. She said, Kaiwa, as your mother, I played my part and I gave you the best, I thought. So with all the decisions that you've made uh, at campus, that is all up to you. When she told me that, I broke down. And uh, in my heart, I was crying because I knew I had disappointed my mom. You know, my mom, she brought us up as a single parent. I know the struggle she has, you know, she has gone through to to raise us up, you know, to bring us up. So I know, I know her story. I know her struggles. I know So when she told me that, I felt bad. I felt bad. There was nothing to turn. I mean, I could not take it back. I I could, nothing I could change. I, um, I left. And then time, time came and then I had to graduate. We graduated, me and my girlfriend. And, um, I got a job first uh, in KCCA. KCCA, that is, it is a big organization. It's it's uh, the the organization that 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 runs Kampala, Kampala City. It's called Kampala Capital City Authority. So, I got a job, and then uh, after two weeks, I also, you know, my brother has uh, has an organization. So I got my girlfriend a job in my, ma- in, in my brother's organization. So we started planning. But even all our life at campus, and even, even after the first, the first, uh, these, these first days after graduation, we kept on planning with my girlfriend. I wanted to make our relationship official. I wanted, you know, to, 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 to I wanted to marry this girl. So I wanted to make everything in our relationship official. And uh, we were talking about this at campus. We used to talk about it. We used to plan things together. I used to plan, I should say, because uh, I didn't know my, my, my girlfriend had other plans. So me, I used to plan this. Uh, then we, we, we kept on working. We started getting some, some little money. Until I remember it was 2019, uh, it was July 2019, uh, around uh, 
at 12 a.m. in the morning, I got a call from my girlfriend, and uh, she told me her mom got a stroke, and she was very sick, and she asked me to help her to take her mom to the hospital. So I... I got my, my sister's car. I went to their home. I picked her mom, her sister, and also herself. Then I took them to the hospital, and that was Mengo Hospital. And you know, Mengo Hospital is, um, it is uh, <laughs> one of the most expensive private hospitals we have in Uganda. And with that hospital, before you do anything, you have to deposit money. So my girlfriend and, and, and her sister, they didn't have any single coin at that moment. They didn't have money. So I had some money with me. So for, for, for her mom to get, to get attention, to get a doctor, I had to pay some money to get treatment. So I got 200,000 shillings. I paid it in the hospital to first get a doctor to attend to her. That was... I mean, I had to do it immediately. And I deposited the money, and then the doctor came and started attending to her. And uh, she, the doctor said she could not go back home. She had to be admitted. And you know, with also admission, you have to pay more money. So I, I paid more, uh, more 250000 to to get her admitted. And uh, that day passed. Uh, there was no response with our life. Second day passed. I thought, but with all these days, I was always with my girlfriend. She didn't say a thing. I didn't see anything wrong in our relationship. I didn't, you know, I didn't sense anything. We were all good. Actually, I used to do things, all this, because I knew I loved my girlfriend. And I knew I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be there for her. So she didn't show me anything. I didn't sense anything. I didn't see anything. And um, then four days, she, 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 she started to respond. And, uh, and, and the fifth day, then she got discharged. Um, then my girlfriend called me and then she told me that they were discharged. Her mom was discharged. So she called me so that, uh, she called me and asked me if I can take them back home. And uh, I remember I had a meeting uh, somewhere in Barara. It was a conference. So she, by the time, when she called me, I told her I was in Barara. So, but I asked them to take an Uber. So that day I didn't, I, I didn't see them. I didn't see them. And um, the second day, I came back. Uh, I remember that was a Saturday, and I had planned to go and check on them at their place in the afternoon. So in the morning, I was trying to work on some things, on, to send some emails at work. I was home, but I was sending some emails at work. I was trying, I was trying to do some, some stuff. And then I decided to check on Facebook, on social media. And um, when I was scrolling down, I saw a poster of my girlfriend with another man asking people, I mean, inviting people to attend to their first introduction meeting. Wow. I, I did, first, I did not believe Actually, I did not believe. I saw that photo, I saw the face, but I did not believe until when I had to read down the names. And that's when my eyes opened. And then within that moment, my tears started coming down. Silently, I was crying in my heart, but tears started coming down. And I was not saying anything. I was not breathing. I was just down. But I could 
not stop to cry. Until when I, I think it took me like five minutes and then I blasted. I could not contain it. I blasted and shout and I cried so loud, so, so loud. I was close with my friend. So my friend didn't know what was going on with me. When I shouted, when I blasted, then that's when he realized that something was happening with me. And I started shouting, crying so loud. And he also, he also got scared. He started asking me what is happening, what's wrong with me. I could not respond. Actually, I could not respond, even say a word. So he started begging me, Nick, please, I'm begging you, please tell me what's happening, please. What is wrong? I could not say a word. It took me around, uh, it took me around 15 minutes. And then I uh, finally, I shouted. He told me, what did you say? He asked me, what did you say? I told him, you know, I said, she is getting married. And then he asked me, who is getting married? I could not explain anymore. So I, I continued crying and then he told me to relax. You know, he tried to calm me down, but there's no way I could, you know, contain it. He told me, Nick, calm down and tell me what's happening. Until I took, a, I took, a, I took more five minutes and then I, I explained what I saw on Facebook. He could, not so, he could not also believe it. But he advised me to stop crying and call the girl and ask her if what I saw was actually true. And that's what I did. I called her. The first time she didn't pick up, I called again. And then she picked. And then I asked her, I told her, I saw you on, the po on a poster with another man and I don't know, is this true or it is something like... It, it? Then she told me, actually, Nick, what you saw is true. I was just waiting for the right time to, to tell you about it. When she told me that, I switched off the phone and I cried again. I cried again. In my mind, I was keeping on asking myself what I did wrong. What happened? Where I went wrong? You know, questions kept on coming. All the struggle, all the sacrifice, everything that I went through with this girl. You know, even the disappointment I made with my mom, you know, it kept on coming to me. I could not stop. I could not believe. I could not believe that I was in that moment. I was really, really broken. For quiet it took me days and months and, you know, I think now it is, it is my, it is now, it is two years down the road. I have never been able to recover from that. From that day, I was left in dark and I have never left that darkness up to now. And today, if you ask me if I will ever trust again or fall in love again, the only answer I can give you is that I don't know. And I don't think so. These stories were directed by Zoe the Storyteller. Audio production for the stories was done by Adnan Singkumba. Many thanks to our project coordinator Nicholas Kaiwa and all the storytellers of Hear My True Story Kampala Season 1. For more stories, please visit hearmytruestory.com. For more information about Umuti Kreativ, 
visit omotikreativ.com or send an email to info at omoti.org. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Music by Edwin Matovo, hosted and produced by Otako. Subscribe to our podcast for more stories and visit us on our website, yemaitruestory.com, for more stories. All the links are listed in the show notes of this podcast.